seeing some really great sessions and uh, we're going to talk with Dan today about all kinds of things Java. We got Java, we got Scala, we got Kafka, whatever. we got all kinds of JVM stuff that we're going to yeah, get into today, there you right? Go, yeah. Maybe talk about how some of that relates back to the work that you've been doing recently. Talk about your podcast, talk about your workshops. You sound good? Yeah, that sounds good. All right. So, Dan, maybe you want to take a, a couple of seconds, let the audience know who you are. Yeah, sure. I'm Daniel Hinojosa uh, from Albuquerque, New Mexico. I'm about a mile uh, from Walter White's house. Uh, so uh, that's actually where I live. So I won't give much away, but the uh, I'll just say the house was uh, getting some sort of cuisine uh, somewhere in the vicinity of the house. And uh, they were like, I don't like that anymore. So they decided to fence it up. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So yeah, it's the home of uh, Breaking Bad. One time, uh, Jay, uh, Jay Zimmerman, the, uh, the organizer of this uh, particular conference, he's like, Hey, can you uh, get me some of those blue meth candies? <laughs> so there was a uh, store over there called the Candy Lady, and they had these little baggies of, uh, of like, you know, meth candies, but they're just candies. Rock candy or something. And, like, the dude's like, yeah, just carry it on on your airplane. I'm like, <laughs> what? Uh, have you seen TSA? Like, what they do? Like, uh, they don't understand a lot of things. And it's I'm just like, candy. Yeah, it's just candy. Yeah, right, we know that's Bob. the street name for it. Right, Bob. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go put your hands over your head. Like, nah, that wasn't going to work out. <laughs> All right, well, I can already tell this is going to be an interesting interview. So yeah, there we go. Now you're speaking this 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 year, is that right? I so maybe am. tell us a little bit about what you're talking about. Well, one of them I have a uh, really cool uh, workshop on architectural design patterns. Uh, that's that's a blast. Uh, one of the things that uh, well, what I'd like to talk about is uh, um, I've been doing presentations. I've been doing workshops with something called uh, Gitpod IO. Get and if you go to uh, if you go to any repository uh, that includes you know GitHub, GitLab, or whatever, and you go into the URL, so let's say HTTPS colon whack whack uh, GitHub.com blah blah blah, and you go right after that slash slash and put gitpod.io and then hit enter, that takes you into a development environment, that takes you into a VS Code uh, environment. And I think they give you like four cores. They give you a substantial amount of, of resources. And your development is absolutely online. And the dream is here, right? I don't know if you ever had this dream of just, I want to do development on the internet and I don't want to carry around a big heavy laptop anymore. I don't want to carry around a big computer anymore. You know, since I was a young child, that's been my Right, my yeah, dream. like, hey, I'll just come in, I'm just gonna come in with my phone, plug it in into the yeah. into the projector and just say, hey, let's let's do it and just start do some programming. Like, wow, that's amazing, yeah. So or just go to someone's computer and just like start cranking out your code. Like, why do you need a hard drive? Pretty yeah. amazing. I mean, I mean, the first time that I was exposed to any of that was with the Cloud 9. IDE, which yeah, was super popular. what happened with. to that? What was that? That was AWS, wasn't it? Was it on AWS? You know, I guess first introduced to it just through Node development because it was so nice to be able to do Node.js development inside a browser-based IDE that actually, right, you know, now you're not, right. you're not jumping. It was actually felt a lot more native to write it in there. Yeah. And it was it was cool, uh, but, you know, ultimately there was some jankiness to it. You know, this is a while ago that it's I got odd. into it. So, so and I had a chance to see GitPod for the first time here at UberConf yesterday. And I got to say, I mean, it was very very cool. I was doing Yeah, you were days. telling me one of the attendees was just already like on their way on Get, uh, get Pod, it and, and it was, you were like, oh, was what so are you doing? What is this? So, yeah. let me, so, so let me ask you then. I mean, you know, as somebody, you've seen, you've been around uh, the, the industry a while, like, like I have. We've, we've seen a lot of stuff come and go. Uh, this cloud-based IDE thing, this browser-based IDE thing, is it, is it here to stay and, and why? Uh, yeah, I think it is. And in fact, uh, I think just as far as uh, presentations, one of the things that I'd like to venture out and do is like every presentation, you know, I have demos, but if you want to run the demos yourself while I'm speaking, yeah, go for it. It's not really like a workshop or whatever. Like, I think it's a great way to introduce things, to prove things, you know, to, you know, show that everything is possible uh, within that, you know, that internet uh, development environment. It's just absolutely great. Yeah, so nice. I think it's, I think it's here to stay. One of the things I like about it, I'll just add, is the, uh, you know, I have an M1 machine, which is a uh, totally different architecture, uh, but something like Gitpod will have like a uh, Intel. So I'll, I'll sometimes jump into that so I can make a, a you know, um, Docker container, although there's BuildX now, but you know sometimes I just want to do things and build things on that particular architecture, so it's, that's kind of nice as well. 
No, that's that's really interesting. But yeah, I mean, I guess it would bring up, you know, if we want to do cross-platform testing and, and to testing across multiple devices, that might be a little bit of a challenge, but still nice to be able to do uh, all. And, and I mean, I guess it kind of probably goes without saying that it's like seamlessly integrated with SEM as well. So it's oh, super yeah. easy to just commit everything oh, back. That's, yeah, that's one of the things. <laughs> I'm probably going to take up all the time on this yeah. at one point. Uh, but like, yeah, that editor, one of the cool things that it has is if you make some editing on that Git pod, there's a push from there and you're going to the same repository. You've already authenticated to your repository. So you just commit to it and it goes back to that repository. So nice. Yeah, I know. That just, is living. The future is here. I feel like, do you think we even deserve this? I, mean, I don't know. Sometimes so it's like, yeah, sometimes too many things are like way too good. Yeah, we don't want to like get spoiled. Finding restaurants, like uh, just like <laughs> editing, you know, software. Uh, it used to be. Just, just everything is just absolutely great. I, I got a uh, new uh, Samsung S23 Ultra. And it has like a thousand times zoom. I was over at my house, and the mountains are far away from sure. my house. Uh, but I did that a thousand zoom, and just randomly, you know, I'm zooming on top of the mountain. I accidentally take a picture of like two houses on top of the mountain. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I know. It's That's just so like impressive. absolutely. So I get my binoculars and my phone. I mean, the phone itself is like. You know, a Harry Potter wand. It, it's our wand that we're able to do yeah. everything that we ever want. Uh, yeah, we don't deserve it. I mean, it's just absolutely amazing. Like, <laughs> it's too easy now. And yeah. yeah, yeah, no. I mean, and these 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 this new generation, this crop of developers, they don't know. You know oh, they don't know. We used to IDE. Re what? Remember we when your parents used to was the IDE? <laughs> yeah. Remember when your parents used to drive around and then they got lost? Because, yeah. like, they didn't have time to read a map and they're yelling at each other. No, I mean, that's how you used to find things. You just have to go outside and yell. And that's right. It was chaos. It was awful. Now, so if now. you pass, like, your exit, you're like, man. Yeah, they'll just reroute. Uh, they'll just reroute. <laughs> it's all good. Okay. Yeah, it's all good. Another couple minutes to listen to my streaming podcast no. on my 5G internet. No, that's right. Oh, wow. Uh, wow, we are, we are a spoiled bunch. All right, so, so Gitpod. So that's one, obviously, very cool. And, you know, when we look at our focus on developer productivity and elimination of toil, Sure. I mean, even the simplest thing, like loading up a repo in your IDE and waiting for it to load. And, oh, yeah. And oh, and you know what? The, the other thing for that Gitpod is yeah. just like, at first I was like kind of a jerk where it's just like, hey, if you can't figure out your Java home, you know, like, what are you doing? Right. <laughs> and then, uh, but then I started getting more sympathy. Like, you know, a lot of, a lot of developers don't have full control of their laptop. Mm. Right. And so... You know, if they can't, they can't set a path, they can't install things. So it's becoming a lot harder to do workshops. And so uh, one of the things about Gitpod is just like, it's someone else's computer and not theirs. And they don't have to like, you know, break things or, or anything like that, change paths to where they're unable to do their work after they get back from a conference. It sounds like, I mean, it sounds like this could actually be something that would be really great for like platform engineers, right? That are already kind of putting these platforms together. But now you could, I could see you sort of like templatize this stuff. And then is, is that, is that a capability that Gitpod has? Can, can you oh, do yeah. that? Yeah. So one of the things that I have is like, uh, for one of them, I have like a machine learning data pipelines. Uh, they just run a Docker compose and you have services. And one of the things that you, you could also do is, you know, for any one of those containers that you're running, uh, you just right click and say open browser. And it comes out on your browser, just like if you were hosting a website. Wow. Just absolutely nuts. Really cool. Yeah. That's cool stuff. So let's pivot a little bit, because we could talk about, it sounds like we could do a whole episode on that alone. But uh, but I want to hear more, dig into a little bit about you know these architectural pattern, design pattern workshops. Um, I just had a great conversation two weeks ago at JCon with uh, Miro Wagner, Java champion, who just published uh, design patterns for Java, practical design patterns for Java is the name of the book. It's okay. a very important book for the community, especially, I think, a community that is um, because we've seen so much growth and so many new people kind of coming in, we often forget about like the basic building blocks that design patterns give us. And so we uh, we had this great conversation around developer productivity engineering and the symbiosis between that and using strong design patterns. Because on the one hand, DPE is eliminating uh, additional cognitive load dealing with the tool chain, right. but the design patterns are removing the cognitive load that's in, that you need to actually put building blocks together to create code. Does that is that is that a fair statement? Do you think that's yeah. that's part of the reason that yeah, you're? Yeah, I don't into know. This? Um, and, and is this book like so, like software design patterns, like adapter pattern and those types uh, of builder things. patterns? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So this one is about uh, architectural patterns. So uh, this would be like uh, valet key CQRS, mm. uh, how you bring systems together and how do you communicate. 
uh, with other remote systems. That's going to be more of the architectural design patterns. I also talk about uh, the software design patterns, your adapter, your builder, your uh, command pattern, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, all are very important. Uh, all are very important because it's the way that we communicate with one another. You know, as software developers, if we talk and say, you know, hey, well, how do we solve this issue? Well, let's just use the adapter pattern here, software-wise. How do we communicate with a remote web service, um, you know, to avoid, you know, anything going wrong? And there are lots of, you know, different kinds of um, ways that we can, you know, avoid lockups like a bulkhead pattern and whatnot. Yeah, so, or short circuiting, or uh, what is it, the closed circuit? I can't even remember that one. But yeah. yeah. Um, now, do you feel like when when we talk about like the broader conversation around architectural design patterns? Do you think that something like the subset of patterns, like enterprise integration patterns, for instance, claim checks and filters and throttles and things like that, do you feel like that is a subset of architectural patterns, or do you think that this is actually something different? I think that's kind of, I don't know, this is probably going to be in my opinion. I think it is the the parent, because like those particular, that particular book, I don't know when it came out, like yeah, 2006, know, something, maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, Great book, though. Yeah, wow. I think, yeah, that was absolutely one of the forerunner books that came Forever out. Hope, Bobby Wolf, uh, right, yeah. before some of these other patterns, uh, like cloud patterns and other things like that, came into being. And very much like the uh, software uh, design patterns, like the Gang of Four book. Sure. You know, they, it was uh, C programming, C++ programming. Uh, we needed some patterns. There was a lot of uh, mutation going on. Things have changed now to where we are doing a lot of immutability now. That changes the whole thing. Like, what do these design patterns look like uh, now? Because things like the state pattern had something called a, a context, mm. which is what was holding the state. But as mm. you and I know now, you know, Java has records. Java has immutability. Like, if we have immutability, how are we going to change the state? So right. that changes the game a lot. Uh, one of the oh, things that I like to do is uh, functional programming. So some patterns I like to add to it are things like, you know, the flat map map filter for each. All those functional designs have other terms, uh, particularly that we use in Scala and Haskell called, uh, and that those are the scary terms: monads, monoids, functors, and other things ah, like that. Sounds like medical no, terminology. No, I know. Oh, doc, <laughs> doc, you got to help me. With these I got these, these monads are killing me. I got these functors on my, these on my feet. Are, I can't oh, walk. <laughs> what's wrong, Dan? All oh, these functors are just killing me. Such pain. <laughs> I know. But um, yeah, even though they're scary, it's just really. Um, you know, functors is map, uh, monads is flat map, and monoids are append, but uh, this all comes from category theory, so that's the basis of it, but don't let it scary. So um, you, you may have heard that, you know, we, we, we've gone through a great enterprise, our first acquisition, uh, pulling in a company called Triple Quote, who has a, a product called Hydra for accelerating Ooh, SBT builds. Wow. Um, so, you know, Good. and this is, to be honest with you, the Scala community, I'm not, I haven't been as close in those circles, and I know that you know the, the community is, uh, I wouldn't say nascent, but certainly newer, uh, and 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 dealing with a, a different, I would imagine, sort of unique set of problems than you know some of the other JVM communities. Sure. So maybe we could you know close out. Just give us a clue. Tell us about a couple of those things. What are the Scala? What is the Scala community really concerned about? What what are they trying to fix right now? Um, I think it's just you know, the Scala community is is just really uh, one different style of programming. Um, you know, heavily into immutability, uh, heavily into isolating side effects. So like printing to your screen, writing, you know, writing to a hard drive or anything like that. So uh, we care about that. We're kind of split uh, in the philosophy as to what the language does. Uh, so, you know, some of us are, you know, doing things very much like Haskell and using type classes. Uh, some are just like, I like my Java, I like designing Java, but I want to use uh, Scala programming. So we're kind of like divided in the way, but you know what? Scala is just a great language. You can do whatever you want. And that was the, uh, that was the uh, point all along. As far as build tools, we have a lot of build tools, but like you said, SBT is, is probably one of the big ones. It scares a lot of people, but you know, I think it's, uh, it's all, not, a, I wouldn't say it's equivalent, uh, to Gradle, but they are, you know, just one of those things that we have in our community where they compete, but we help each other at the same time as well. Sure. Well, and I mean, you know, we, you, People can't see the audio, but we have our light box that says "Great Love Gloves Maven." I mean, mm -hmm. we're really doing, we're working really hard now to to kind of be open to a bunch of different build tools to be able to serve the broader JVM community. So that's interesting. I'd love to pick your brain more on that too. I mean, are you going to be at a? Are you going to have a presence at Scala Days? 
Uh, no, you know what? I've never been there, but I should uh, I should get my act together and go submit uh, submit some talks. I'm usually in these conferences because I'm so used to the hour and a half that whenever I'm you know given a talk to do in like 50 minutes, it's just like I'm, never, never, never. I'm just <laughs> like going in a mile a minute. But uh, yeah, I've been there. Yeah, yeah I, I do like the mile and a half. It kind of spoils me, but uh, yeah, maybe one of these days I'll uh, submit over Good. to Scala Days Great. and a few others. Yeah. Nice. Well, yeah, we're going to we're going to do it this year and, and I'm, I'm hoping to learn a lot about the community as well. So that's great. Well, Dan, listen, thank you for taking the time. All right. Uh, wrap up. How do people find you? Do you want to be found? What's your oh, podcast? Yeah. Tell um, us about that. Let's see. I vacated Twitter. So I'm over at, uh, at one of the greatest inventions that I hope more people appreciate. Uh, Mastodon. Absolutely great. I am at uh, D. Inojosa at uh, Mastodon Social. Uh, so come check me out over there. Uh, I am on LinkedIn. I never know what my LinkedIn address is <laughs> when I ask for, but I am on LinkedIn and uh, yeah. And you mentioned this no podcast plan. as well. Oh yeah, a podcast. I'm sorry. Yeah, so we're on Stack D podcast Stack with D. Uh, uh, Keto Man uh, and a few others. <laughs> I don't know why I'm, you know, I'm blanking, I'm blanking out on that's the okay. others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, but, that uh, Keto, conference. That's right. Brain dead. You know, I understand. Me. But yeah, uh, <laughs> Keto Man. Uh, Keto Man is the um, is the head of it and. Um, and uh, we all have a great time. We talk to uh, lots of guests. And so yeah, maybe we'll come on. Uh, Would absolutely love to. Yeah. Would love to do yeah. that. Well, Dan, thanks for taking the time. Really great right. talking. Very illuminating yep. and enlightening. Ian Labitz and uh, Josh Juno. All right. Uh, I don't know why that uh, had to go. like coil in you there. Pulled out, at least it wasn't like 4 a.m. You blurted out in your <laughs> sleep. You know, you got it out now. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hey, Dan, all right, thanks. Cool. Thank thanks you very much. Enjoy the rest it. of the show and, uh, and take care. All right. Thanks, everybody.